What's up guys, Chad back here with you. Wanted to preface this video with just a quick, easy rant real quick. First of all, I just wanted to say that the reason why I'm going to make these videos is because I think that Race Flight has done an incredible job with their boards, the software, the technology, and everything. I see a lot of ranting and raving um, on the forums, on Facebook groups, because... You know, we all spend so much time and money on this stuff. And then when things just go bad, we just go ballistic. So we all just need to get together, work through the problems, and we'll figure it all out. This is an emerging technology. It's a cutting edge technology. And it's just so great. I've never had a better experience. I've been through all the flight controllers from... KK2s to CC3Ds, the Nays, all of them, and nothing has been as good as this. Is it because technology has just evolved, or is it just because these guys are that good? Maybe it's a little bit of both. But anyway, I just wanted to say that. Hopefully my videos will help some of you out. I tell you, I've put about eight packs through each of these quads. I've had no issues with race flight at all. It's just been a good learning experience, and uh, that's the hope of this video series is that uh, we can kind of keep on learning and pass on some good information to those that might need our help. So anyway, let's get to the video. What's going on, guys? Chad here, Team Nobody. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Visa and MasterCard, and my paycheck. Anyway, now that all that's over, let's go ahead and take a look at Race Flight 1 and getting tuning set up. Now, anybody that's flown their aircraft with Race Flight 1 by now knows that, once again, anything that Preston or Schizo or anybody has said is true. Race Flight 1, out of the box, will get you 90 to 95% there then it's up to you to get that extra five to 10%. Most people won't even know. If you're a first timer flying mini quads and you dumped a Revolt or a Revolt 2 or a Schizo board into your ship, you'll never know. But I'm here to show you how to get that extra percentage out of there and how to make your life a little bit easier. So the first thing I'm gonna want you to do if you're a Free Sky Tyrannus owner, is go into your Tyrannus and show you how easy this is. Basically, you're going to want to set up another channel. Um, I have a few channels on here. Channel A is my arming, uh, 5 SA switch is my arming, 6 is for my VBAT and voltage. Seven is going to be for the black box logging that we're going to set up here. And eight is actually for the buzzer that I have installed. So set all those up. Remember what number it is uh, because that's what makes uh, race flight even easier. Because it relays directly to the number that you have. So let's go ahead and plug the quad in. We got the configurator up and running. Telemetry recovered. All right, that's going on. We're gonna to need to plug it in to power our receiver. Make sure your props are off just in case. So here we are at the main race flight screen. If you see right here, arm number five that correlates to number five on my Tyrannus. so when i flip that switch it'll arm disarm the quad everything else now it's just as easy to set up everything else so let's set up black box first scroll down to where it says logging on the telem on the Tyrannus, i set up a switch on channel seven so when i flip that switch 
you'll see it go over here and this will turn on and off my black box. So I would say flying, if you know what you're doing, you're going to get obviously be able to iron out some of the problems. Um, <coughs> in flight, I've already ironed out a couple of mine. Um, I'll probably put them in a later video though. Uh, it just doesn't really fit into how I want to go about this. Um, so visually, you know, with the, the GoPro or Connex or whatever, if you see vibrations and stuff, you'll be able to basically get rid of some of that stuff um, just by actually looking at it without and adjusting your PIDs without even using the black box. But Race Flight 1 does such a great job that honestly, if you can't see any of that stuff, that black box is going to be the only choice left to get the rest out of the quad and get it tuned and not have any bad things or tendencies that are going on in there. It's also going to allow us to adjust our filter levels to the appropriate amounts. Even though they say that Race Flight 1 works the best at low filtering, and I haven't had any problem with it yet. Also wanted to show you just uh, to go over it again, I assigned a switch to the buzzer that I installed on number eight. So if I flip that switch, the buzzer's on, nothing, buzzer. So it's just that easy to assign something here in Race Flight 1. Super easy. Um, there's other things down here, direct, LED color, LED mode, um, fail safe and attitude. I uh, still haven't really researched and see what that stuff is yet, but we'll get to it. Uh, anyway, next thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to click on logging. And then here, uh, you might, it might show zero. It might show a line up to about right here and say zero, but you want to click on format flash and format the flash memory built in to the flight controller. This is where everything is going to be stored. So this will take a few minutes here. All right. And when that's done, get your switch set up. You're all ready to go ahead and set up black box. But like I said, try to fly it all around first. See how things go. I noticed on punch outs that I was getting some oscillation at really high punch out that I could visibly see. Uh, Schizo, Preston, Kalen, uh, they've all pretty much said that you can go into your PIDs and start increasing uh, these values by 10%, 20, uh, but yeah, 10%. So we're basically working your way up. I decided to take smaller increments um, and really at start I wouldn't even mess with any of the integrals and derivatives I mean the way that we're, the race flight code works is it's using a really high derivative to smooth everything out anyway so I've seen some videos where they have suggested where you drop everything here to one but I mean it's so close anyway that with black box I think we'll be able to get that extra percentage and not have any issues. So we'll see how that goes down the road. While we're in here, let's go ahead and talk about the other main thing. Obviously, if you're a seasoned FPV pilot, it's not gonna be anything new to you. If you are not, this is really what you want to get set right first before you start doing all your tuning, which is basically gonna be your rates and expo because I still see a lot of posts on forums and Facebook groups and stuff where people basically confuse rates and expo with how the quad is tuned. They think that if they actually increase the P number, uh, that it will actually make it uh, P number on roll. It would actually make it roll faster, which us, not us veterans or non-beginners know that that's not the case. So, 
right off the bat it comes set up with this race flight high expo um which if you take a look at the curve you know this is 50 percent stick right here so basically you can see the first half of your stick movement is basically going to be very doing very little all right up to about mm, 150 180 degrees per second um the rest of it is basically going to encompass the other 50 percent is basically going to equal out to about 80 percent of your actual movement now if we go and click on race flight low expo rates we can see that low expo for them really isn't that much of a jump you're really only going up to 300 at 50 percent so basically you're only increasing you're basically increasing your uh decreasing your speed by about 100 degrees per second so i would probably recommend starting with the high expo which is the way it's set up see how that flies for you and this is basically all about your stick memory so once you memorize how long it takes for you to do a roll or how long it takes for you to do a flip that's when you're basically going to start making your changes um, there's three vectors here or three curves and right now since they're all set the same uh, you can't see any of them but let's see if I just go and change the y'all expo to zero. Now you'll see the y'all line come up there. So they're all in there and you can set individual curves for all of them. So work on your rates inside here, get familiar and get totally comfortable with your rates and how you want your quadcopter to react whenever you barely press your stick or whenever you really hammer on it to go around a turn so on and so forth some people like steel and a few other people fly with ridiculously fast rates i mean i don't even know how fast they're spinning three and a half four and a half rotations a second i don't know it's crazy ridiculous but i know some racers keep their rates really low um like brain drain you know because he's racing he's not doing flips uh flips and rolls it doesn't care so why does he need super fast rates um around this point here where that way he can basically be a little bit more forgiving on the stick and he's not going to all of a sudden go into a really crazy yaw or roll or something like that because you know he's actually brought this line down a little bit more i mean i don't even know if he reaches uh, a max at the end of his stick um, it's hard to say so anyway that's uh pretty much what i wanted to do in this video was just give uh, a quick look at this stuff and show everybody again how easy it is for to set up things the simplest things that sometimes can drive you crazy uh, with some of the other stuff super simple with race flight one um one other thing though when it go back to the black box logging you are going to need a reader and there's two different readers there's the beta flight black box explorer and the clean flight black box explorer um when we get some black box data we'll take a look at these uh they're both free in the store just go into the chrome play store and do a search for black box explorer and they'll both pop up so get those because basically we're going to need to take those files put them into here and that's going to show us all the information that we need i'm sure everybody knows what that looks like um, but just in case you don't know about that uh, that's the tools that we're going to need so that's going to be it guys anyway thanks to my sponsors again thank you to my team hands up to myself 
Talk to you guys later.